Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending March 31st, 2018. First up, this is from my friend Brian D. Thank you for sending this article in. This is from Forbes Magazine, Forbes.com. This is how science will save us from hurricanes. Among all the natural disasters that occur on planet Earth, hurricanes are in many ways the most devastating. Um, it's the single most natural, most cost, costly natural disaster in history and the most expensive ones tend to, tend to occur in North America. Among them Katrina, Irma, Irma, Sandy, Harvey, and Maria with winds often exceeding 125 miles per hour. The idea is to use a technique that they've used in Norway in the past to keep passages ice-free as uh, ocean gets to temperatures to where it's beginning to form ice and freeze. What they do is they use these bubble tubes and it forms curtains of bubbles underneath the ocean and takes the warmer air that's just a few degrees above freezing and brings it up to the surface to keep the surface just warm enough to where it never ices over and that keeps the shipping lanes open. Well they're thinking if they put these tubes down about 100-150 feet below the surface of the ocean what they can do is take the cooler water down there and bring it up to the surface because you have to have a temperature of around 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 26.5 centigrade uh, for to be able to form hurricanes, that's the reason why you only see them in certain areas of the world because if the ocean never quite gets that warm, you're not going to have uh, enough energy to power the hurricane or in the case of a cyclone if it's down in uh, the south. So anyway, the idea is to bring that cold water up and uh, yeah, they're going to try to use that kind of technique to do that. Um, it says right here, um, and my little kitty is going to join us here. Cooler temperatures which are present at the surface during the off-season means that there's less water vapor in the air directed above the ocean surface. So during those periods you don't have many hurricanes. It also means that the moisture-rich air won't be able to rise, cool, and provide ongoing fuel for a storm. In order to make a tropical cyclone, you need the water to be at least 80 degrees for the first 50 meters of its depth. That is why tropical storms like hurricanes, typhoons, and cyclones only form along the equatorial regions of the world. The water simply isn't hot enough elsewhere given the other conditions of Earth. So. Uh, the perfect place that they're going to use to test this, they need a place to be able to set this up to test this. Well, in the Gulf of Mexico, guess what? We have about 4,000 oil rigs down there, too. So um, we've got the, uh, um, the equipment in place and the ability to do it. So we may be seeing some tests of that. And if we could just uh, um, maybe not in every case stop the hurricanes, but if it could at least make them less devastating, that would be a great thing. So... Uh, Next up, this is from my friend Tom H. This is from Fox News. Jupiter's great red spot is growing taller as it shrinks and turning orange. Jupiter's great red spot has been shrinking for a century and a half. I did talk about that in a previous uh, video on TDD Report, and I would probably advise you if you get a chance through an astronomy club or a, uh, an observatory or something like that, get a chance to look at Jupiter if you possibly can through a good-sized telescope because the spot's been shrinking. It used to be like three times the size of the Earth, and now it's just a little bit bigger than the Earth. But unusually, it's actually uh, getting a little bit taller, too. So it says, a team of researchers created a timeline for the diminishing cyclone by looking at archived observations of the great spot, according to a recent statement by NASA. To trace the storm's size, color, drift rate, and shape, they combined these historical findings with spacecraft data going back far back as 1979. One surprising fact finding is that the great Red spot is growing taller. The study led by Army, no, by Amy Simon, planetary atmosphere expert at NASA's Goddard Space, Goddard Space Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, found that the diameter of the storm is shrinking, but its clouds are stretching upwards. Now, as usual, they don't know exactly why. They just know this is kind of happening, but something interesting to study. Um, let's see, what else here? Researchers don't know why the storm has become more intensely orange since 2014, but suggest it's possible that the growing height of the great red spot might be the cause. As the storm stretches upward, the chemicals that give color to the storm might reach higher in the atmosphere where they would receive more UV radiation from the sun and therefore darken. So anyway, instead of a third story from the news, I want to actually give you a review of a gadget I picked up. I went to Harbor Freight a few weeks ago. I think it's been almost a month. And I'd been looking for a headlamp. And in the past, I'd found that the headlamps kind of Basically, they looked kind of like a version of this. This is one of those little chameleon flashlights I got at Tractor Supply. You can also get these free at Harbor Freight with a coupon. Um, they have between 27 and 30 LEDs, and a lot of the headlamps 
um, use something like this to or an arrangement of LEDs like this or maybe like the LEDs in front here and basically it's just a strap that goes around your head with a uh, light somewhat similar to this so a lot of your light is being spread out to the sides and not really focused so when I was in Harbor Freight last time I saw this this is a quantum light and the nice thing about it too is instead of having the battery and everything up front the batteries are in the back to help balance it and then you've got this little telescopic thing here so I'll put it on to show you here and it also you can also uh, adjust it and it will fit on a regular standard construction hard hat it's uh, adjustable as far as up and down you can you know have it point down so um, whatever direction you're looking at or whatever you can have it point to that direction so that's nice and then you go in and out to be able to focus now I made a little video I'm going to put up right now showing you what the beam is like. It can go from uh, maybe a small beam to about double the size so it stays very focused. Now it's rated at 310 lumens but because it's focused the way it is to me it looks about the equivalent when it's on the brightest setting which is your first setting as you saw in the video there. That's the brightest and then you have a little bit dimmer setting which I actually use most of the time but it appears to be the equivalent of about 800 lumens when it's at the brightest setting and then maybe more like about four or five hundred because it's focused in just one direction so it's an excellent type of flashlight to work with and to work with hands free so if you look on the uh, site and I'll put a link to the site up here for you to look at it's uh, about thirteen bucks and if you sign up or even just go online just go online to harborfreight.com and you will see probably about half the time when you go on the site you'll see a twenty percent off coupon sometimes you'll see a twenty five percent off coupon for uh, Saturday and Sunday for Easter, they were running 25% off on items. So you can pick this up. You don't even have to pay 13 bucks like I did. You can pick this up probably for 10 bucks or maybe a little over 10 bucks, including tax. But um, great, uh, great light. And if you look at the reviews too, I mean, you, you can't necessarily trust all reviews because you never know which ones are, you know, by the company themselves. But I would say it's pretty accurate when they say here it's five and three quarter, or four and three quarter out of five stars, and that's 235 reviews and. Uh, other than the longevity of it, I mean, sure, it's limited with what it can do. It's only got three settings, uh, bright, dim, and then the flashing light, which I don't know why you need that, but maybe to get somebody's attention. But um, the simplicity of it, I think, actually makes it better to use than some of the others that have more settings. And if you use it outside, I use it outside a lot, like in the backyard walking around. It's got plenty of light off to the sides, too. I mean, it's not real bright off to the sides because it's focused, but plenty enough. Um, you don't need to really spread the light like you do on some of those other headlamps. Um, that like I say are kind of like this deal right here where you got about half of your useful light is spread off to the side where you don't really need it so definitely say um, except for longevity I will uh, if there's anything in the future you know like maybe a, a year from now or something like that that this thing fails for some reason um, other than abuse or something like that where I would actually drop it and break it or something um, I'll give you my opinion if that happens but so far uh, I like it a lot and I would say maybe even if it does last a year and then fail what the heck for 10 bucks with a coupon just buy another one it uses three AAA batteries by the way and and it's nice having the batteries in the back because it feels fully balanced on your head it does not feel like it's going to slip forward or, or or slip back they've got the weight um, settings just right on that so anyway that's about it for this week take care everybody I will catch you next week <laughs>